Ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance, and for the millions watching at home, DCK Productions proudly brings to you the greatest podcast in the world! Oh, the greatest podcast in the world? Suck it. No, you suck it. No, you suck it. No, you suck it. No, you suck it. I appreciate it if you both suck it. Suck it! We really should stop this fighting. Otherwise, we'll miss the fireworks. There won't be any fireworks. And here we go. And welcome, everybody, to Suck It! I am the great and powerful King of Kings, Prince of All That Is Awesome, Derek. How the fuck is everybody tonight? I am stoked. Trust me when I say that. For those of you guys who joined me on the live uh, stream earlier, introducing some of the bands that were coming on the live concert series, um, Saw how excited I am, and I'm even more excited with the start of it. Um, finally, 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 I can bring you guys some live music. Um, and also, you know, just talk to a great band overall. Um, that's the whole idea behind this. Um, you know, some of the national acts, you get to know them, and they get to play for you. And the local acts, you know, get to introduce them to you and, you know, uh, play them for you and possibly, you know, they get to be heard nationwide for the very first time ever. So that's why I'm excited as hell about what we're doing here. Um, so that's, you know, I'm, I can't, I can't express myself enough. It's I'm so stoked. All right. So tonight we have hooked like Helen. So that is going to be a great, um, you know, talk with them. And then uh, they're going to play an acoustic set for us. Um, but before we get to that, um, I want to go ahead and uh, touch on something. So last night, I had a a manic episode live on the air. And that was embarrassing for me. But at the same time, it needed to happen. Um, I was not well the last couple of days. And last night, it just kind of all came gushing out. Um, but the outpouring of support that has come out today because of it is unreal. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I told you last night that the guy that you saw that was on here crying, talking about how bipolar Bob was kicking his ass yesterday. It's not going to be back today. He's not, he's happy as hell. So um, Derek is back. Um, and I just want to appreciate you guys for sticking that out with me because that was, that was tough. Um, so with that being said, um, Starting Monday, um, I'm going to start um, an hour-long show uh, right here, exclusive to Twitch only, not for the podcast, um, the Mental Health Hour. Um, Kat is going to come back, um, and she's going to join me for this. Um, and it's just going to be us talking to real people, um, no celebrities, no nothing, uh, nothing like suck it, um, just us talking to real people about mental health issues. Um kind of get back to the core of why I started the show to begin with. Um, but now that, you know, the show is my full-time job, I can make 10 different versions of it and be kind of fine with that. So, you know, whatever it's mine. I can do whatever I want. Suck it. Podcast is all me. So I'll do what I want when I want. Damn right. All right. So without further ado, let's get right to the, thick of it all tonight the reason why we are here we're not here to listen to me complain about my bipolar disorder anymore i'm sick of talking sick of talking about that we're here to some layer some live fucking music so let's get right to that so without further ado please welcome nikki and john hooked like helen 
Hello. Hi. Hello. You? I'm. You know what? I am great. How are you guys? We're doing fantastic. Thank you. We're super. That excited. is awesome. Yeah, I'm super excited for you guys to be here as well. Um. So first off, I do want to go ahead and say, it is nice to talk to fellow Ohioans. I thought yeah. that. Was, I saw that Ohio State on your head. And then I also have my Ohio State O on my arm. Right on. He's got Ohio State uh, gym shorts on right now. I did, I did. You know, I, I got. I'm I'm actually from Lorraine. So not too far from you guys. Yeah. Yeah, we're like neighbors, man. Yeah. I got the I got the horseshoe right there. I got my O right there. See, I'm all I, you know, I'm all Ohioed out. I oh, am a, oh I O. Oh, I am so <laughs> when I saw that you guys were from Cleveland area, I was like, oh yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Us Ohioans, we know how to stick together. We we do know how to stick together. Let me tell you, I was I was stoked about that one. So um so let's talk about your journey to get to where you are. Um, you know, how did the, you know, I'm going to ask the cheesy normal questions first, just because, you know, the people want to know the cheesiness and then we'll get into the fun stuff. Um, so how did your, how did you guys start this? What exactly, you know, and where did the name hook like Helen come from? Cause neither one of your guys' names are Helen. <laughs> so, Everyone thinks her yeah, name is Helen. They call me Helen, but that's okay. <laughs> it's not my name. Um, so I grew up actually not in Ohio. Um, I grew up in Southern California and I was out there doing like my solo piano stuff um, in LA. And John was from here in the Cleveland, greater Cleveland area. And he moved out to LA to join a rock band. And my friend, Helen, introduced me to the lead singer of that rock band and they requested that I join the band. And so that's how I ended up meeting John. So we played as Red Circle Underground. Um, it was like a like a seven piece rock band with like a harmonica and like kind of like a classic rock type outfit um, for several years and did like a little bit of mini touring um, out there. And then, you know, it was sort of time to close that chapter. Um, you know, the band had been doing it for a long time and we were ready to start a family and have a kid. So John suggested that we move back to Ohio because it's such a great place to raise a family. Um, so that's what we did. And then, you know, because we're still like artists, like just because we had, you know, sort of started the next phase of life, we couldn't just stop music. So we ended up just um, continuing on with music, but with a new project. And, you know, because of Helen and, you know, her sort of like being the tie, you know, for our sort of destiny, like our, our family and our, our musical journey, we, it was the name of the band is just a tribute to her. So basically not only did Helen hook you guys up as far as musically goes, but without her, you guys would have never met and gotten married. Exactly. Right. And we wouldn't have our son. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's actually a really cool story. I already knew that. Like I said, I just wanted to hear you guys say, it cause it's actually a pretty cool story. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and that's one thing that I love about, you know, the music, you know, industry. Um, so a lot of bands, excuse me, a lot of fans, you know, hear bands like you guys, hear bands like Skillet, you know, stuff like that, that are husband and wife bands and think, holy shit, you guys are together like 24 seven. How the fuck do you, do you not knock him out sometimes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> We weren't going to talk about all that. Um, it is a challenge. I would say I don't recommend it necessarily for everybody. <laughs> um, but, you know, as our story goes, we actually knew how to collaborate as musicians first. <laughs> um, so that was sort of the thing that we knew how to do. And then, like, the rest of it sort of, like, has had its ups and downs. But we've been doing it for a while. <laughs> so we were in the band together for, for two years before yeah. we got together, yeah. right? Yes. Um, so... It's been, I would say, and then especially with the lockdown and the quarantining and everything, I mean, it's like we try to compartmentalize and keep, you know, family life here and, you know, the music of it all here and then the business side of it here, but it ends up just sort of all blending together. <laughs> so when you guys are Husband writing drama here, band drama here. Yeah. Yeah. So basically when you guys are writing, when you're touring, when you're doing all that stuff, you guys, I mean and you know air quotes aren't husband and wife you guys are a band and then the moment that stops you guys become husband and wife again 
yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a learned process over right. the past couple of years for sure. Like Nikki turn around and look at me and you know tell me not to hit that note or like you know, <laughs> I'm not thinking what I'm so, like super something nice. all crazy. I'm like, man, she's not that mean. But I'm like, oh wait a minute, this is band Nikki. This band Nikki. It's <laughs> all like this is punk. This is front woman Nikki. Right. So I'm like, okay, she's right. Hit the right note, John. That's <laughs> Hey, you know, I, I think that's actually probably the best way to go about it because um, there's been far too many disasters in the music as an industry because of people not being able to separate that. So that actually it warms my heart a little bit to hear that from you guys. That's actually really cool. Um, so talk about this, uh, the stream concert that you guys did um, a couple weeks back. Um you guys did a, a local show or a stream show for one of the local news stations nearby or something along those lines. Um, talk about that. How did that happen? So that was really cool. Um, we are from the name of our little town is Milan and it's kind of close to Sandusky, um, mm -hmm. like theater point is and all that. So um, this, the uh, director of the Sandusky state theater um, happened to be just a listener of ours for several years. And he, reached out to us and asked if we wanted to um, come do a live stream from the Sandusky State Theater, which is this beautiful, historic theater, like 100 years old. I mean, yeah. like amazing paintings and chandeliers and all, all that stuff. And we were like, yes. Um, so we got to do that. And I mean, it was it was super weird because it was obviously like empty, you know, like just a bunch of seats out there. Um, but it was beautiful and just amazing, you know, reverberation in the room. And we got to do live stream it through the Sandusky Registers uh, YouTube channel. Um, so we were able to just like, you know, despite this the pandemic, um, be able to connect with local listeners and, you know, play some music for everybody. And that was just, it was a really cool night. And, um, you know, John had been going to the Sandusky State Theater since he was a kid. So it was really cool for him. And then like, literally like, a week later, there was this freak windstorm that like destroyed the roof of the theater. Oh, wow. Completely major, demolished. Major, like, major damage. Yeah, like bricks everywhere for like blocks. Um, so that was like really insane. And we just felt like so grateful that we got to play there when we did. And I mean, they are going to rebuild it, but you know, it, it will be different. It won't, it won't be the same old, so. Crazy. Yeah, unfortunately, that Lake Erie Lake Effect storms; those are brutal. I mean, yep. I mean, I grew up two blocks away from Lake Erie and Lorraine, and you know, I remember the the winters were just brutal. Um, yeah. You know, rainstorms were just brutal. You know, yeah, so trust me, I, I definitely know how that is, especially right there near Cedar Point. That's that's some brutal stuff right there. Um, speaking of Cedar Point, you guys have a concert coming up at Cedar Point soon. Yes. So um, we're part of their bands in residence um, that they're doing this year. Uh, I mean, it, it got a little messed up again because of the pandemic, but, you know, Cedar Point, like they know safety and protocol because mm -hmm. they've got, you know, a lot on the line with all of this, the roller coasters and everything. Um, so they're going to have everything socially distanced and, and masked up and all of that stuff. And um, yeah, we're going to be playing there um, for the first week of August and then the third week of August. Now, is the park open now? Yes, I just believe opened. they just opened maybe last week. Yeah, last week, I think. Um, yeah, okay. so, you know, that whole, you know, minimum, like, they're, reduced capacity. They're or, open open for pass holders. You have to register um, ahead of time, and I think it's 50% capacity. A lot of the rides are shut down, so it's definitely not your normal, normal or your yeah. regular, you know, extravagant Cedar Point experience. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they are opening up the gates and letting people come in and, you know, walk around and, you know see the lake and feel the breeze right so some, should be cool it'd be different but it'll be cool yeah exactly yeah. that's awesome i'm i'm glad that that's happened because you know that's one of my favorite you know parks in the world cedar point is just hands down one of the best um king's island is second but you know cedar point's number one for sure we love it, we love it. yes 100 percent um so you guys recently were part of a movie that was just released on netflix yeah. Um, talk about that. Cause that is actually the movie's really, really beautiful. Um, so talk about that. Cause that's, that's actually really, really awesome. And the, the, the music video you guys shot for it. I mean, I mean, Nikki, I just fell in love with you. Sorry, John, but you know, that's with moment, <laughs> that, that first note and I, you, what you play in the piano, I was just like, Oh, okay. 
new musical oh. crush. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, that came about in a really crazy way. And just stop me if you want to interrupt. No, I'll just keep go, go, um, go. Uh, like actually, you know, we had written a song a few years ago and um, I wrote it kind of autobiographically about something that had happened in my past um, when I was very young. And uh, I was, you know, we, we tracked it just kind of like a piano vocal version of it. And then I was scrolling through Facebook one day and I saw this um, online songwriting contest. It was free to enter. You just have to upload an iPhone video of you performing the song. Um, so John filmed me playing Liar and um, we uploaded it and forgot about it. And then, you know, we had some in our inbox a few weeks later um, saying we won the grand prize. And we were a little skeptical, but, you know, we were like, okay, I guess this is legit. So we um, got flown out to LA um, to meet the writer and directors of this high strung dance movie that had just come out um, and was doing like really, really well in, in Europe. And uh, we met them at the studio and they just loved Liar. We tracked it that day. Um, like, you know, retracted uh, the full band and drums and everything. And, you know, they hadn't written High Strung Free Dance yet because that was going to be the sequel. But they said they loved the song and like really were hoping to be able to get it in there. Um, and then they ended up calling us, you know, probably a year later or something uh, to let us know that they actually wrote a whole scene in this script around Liar and it was going to be in it. And then flash forward, Juliet Doherty, the star of the film, is dancing to our song Liar. And it's choreographed by Tice DiOrio, um, who just did Taylor Swift's last tour. And, um, you know, we're flying to Bucharest, Romania and shooting this music video with the um, cinematographer from the film, um, Viorel Sigurvici, who's just amazing. And like the whole crew. And um, yeah, all just because of like Facebook. <laughs> so it's just, it's nuts. And the song. And the song. <laughs> the song. Oh, I think we lost your audio. Was I talking too much? That's me. My bad. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> I was like, I broke it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now I coughed and I forgot to turn my mic back on. Um, so you guys have had a, a few trials and tribulations with, you know, the first bands and then now forming it look like Helen. And now you've had like a really steady, you know, rise, you know, what is next for you guys? Where do you guys want to go next? So we, you know, our whole goal this whole time has just been to be able to play music and have that be what we do. So we just want to keep that going. Um, you know, we did have a bunch of show dates booked at the beginning of all, the, all this, you know, in March, we had to cancel a show in Cleveland on March 13th. Um, so while that's all kind of up in the air, you know, we're really grateful for the Cedar Point thing. Like that's like weird. Nobody's getting to play live right now. Um, but we still don't really know what's going to happen with festivals and all that. So we're just, you know, yeah. we have our home studio. That's where we track our music. So we're just working on a new EP right now. Right. And, and record and tour and as soon as we possibly can. As yeah. soon as everything opens back up. Gotcha. Um, one of the things that I've, you know, talked to, um, you know, a lot of bands about, um, especially ones that aren't, you know, the A list, you know, been around for 20 years and have millions of dollars in the bank. Um, right. um you know, a lot of you know people have asked me this today, and then also asked me a couple other times too. You know, what have you guys been doing, you know, throughout this whole thing, just to kind of stay afloat? I mean, I know it's a hard question to answer, um, and it's a kind of a personal question to answer. But at the same time, your fans and I and everybody else want to make sure that a you know, what what have you guys done that we can learn from? Number one, um, and then number two, you know, that whole you know, I guess you could say that. Wow, look at how they persevered through this type of situation. Right. Um, you know, it's a lot of different things. You have to really expand yourself as an independent artist and get, you know, do as much as you possibly can, many different things. So, you know, I've been really fortunate that I've been able to, like, compose some cues for TV shows, you know, not necessarily as Hook Like Helen, um, just instrumental stuff, you know, get placements in TV shows and you know, signing publishing deals on just like random kind of music in that way, you know, that's something that pays the bills a little bit quicker or, you know, easier than like streaming, you know, I mean, yeah. normally it's merch and touring and stuff for indie bands. And since that's kind of, you know, I mean, even little local shows, it's like, you know, they'll pay you something or whatever. And like right now these streams, it's, it's hard to do that. So I would say, you know, just try and just, you know, expand yourself, you know, in, 
invest if you can in your own home equipment and learning more about the different aspects so that you are like well-rounded and able to do that kind of stuff. That's a great answer. Um, thank you very much for, thank you very much for answering that. Cause I know it's a, one of those out of left field, like what the hell is he asking me type questions. So I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> that was good. good. It's totally good. good. Yeah, that <laughs> um, a lot of people, when I say I'm going to ask that type of question to, you know, anybody, they're like, why would, what's wrong with you? You're going to offend them. I'm like, no, I'm not going to offend them. I'm asking them the proper way. There's not, it's not like a, Hey, what y'all doing for money? <laughs> it's nuts. How are you guys, you know, how are you guys, you know, the way I did it. And, and people laugh at me every time I do that, but it's funny. Um, <laughs> so with all that being said, um, one of the things that I've been talking to a lot, you know, music producers and publicists and everybody else in between is the future of music. Okay. Um, whether albums are dead, whether EPs are the way to go, whether singles are the way to go. Um, how do you guys foresee putting out your music in the future? Cause, um, one of my favorite bands is falling in reverse. Um, and Ronnie Radke came out not too long ago and said, Hey, falling in reverse is never putting out another album. Maybe we'll do an EP every once in a while, but we're just going to release a new single every six months. Just when you start to miss us, we'll give you something else. You know, yeah. and so how, what are your guys' feelings on that? Um, I think that's probably really smart, um, given the current climate. Um, there's just so much content out there, you know, and, and, and just so many things coming at people so quickly. You, you don't want to be forgotten. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, not not to say anything against you know loyal fans because they're definitely out there and we appreciate them. Um, but you want to stay fresh and on top of it. So I get that. Um, for us, we've done EPs. We did a really long EP. It was nine songs for our first one, <laughs> but it was still an EP. Um, and that's kind of what we're gonna do moving forward as well. We also feel like it's kind of like quality over quantity is our goal. You know, we kind of want to have each song be something that maybe could be a single, you know? So we would yeah. probably release every song as a single, but still release them as EPs. And with so much coming out too, it's kind of with the listeners used to singles, it's, it's almost asking a lot to get them to sit down and listen to your whole 15 right. song album, you know? Right. Uh, it just takes a lot of time for, for people to do. So just, yeah. You know, going yeah. forward, I like singles. I think that's the best way. Yeah, I was talking last night to uh, Scott Page, former member of Pink Floyd and a former member of Toto and Super Tramp about this exact same subject. And, um, you know, he he agreed with you and he agreed with what I was saying, because one of the things that I um, I miss of like, you know, back from the 90s is, you know, waiting in line at Virgin Records, you know, for an hour and a half at midnight to get that yeah. new album and yeah. then get in my car and rip it up right there and pop it in. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, Metallica's getting ready to release a new album. Cool. Let me just set it up on my Amazon to auto download. I'll go to sleep. I'll wake up the next morning and it's there. The excitement's not there. Right. Um, and, and but the 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 thought of okay, when is they when are they gonna release their next single? Holy crap, let me follow them. You know, when what's going on? I'm starting to miss them. Oh shit, there it is. And then you get that sweet relief and then so on and so forth. So I, I definitely agree with that's the way to go. Um, and I'm, you know, I wish you nothing but success with that too. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Absolutely. So you ready to get to the fun stuff? Yeah. Do it. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. So I'm, I'm just going to mute myself. I'm going to take myself off and it's all you. Cool. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, this is super cool. Um, I'm going to just wet my whistle for a second here. So our first song um, that we're going to play acoustically, um, and this is a little different for us, but um, it's actually really fun and exciting because we kind of get tired of playing the music the way we normally play it with full sound. So um, this is a song from our first EP. Um, it's called Get Well, and actually it is about mental health and addiction and recovery. Um, so we hope that, you know, it resonates with the right people tonight. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Thank you. 
slightly abridged version. <laughs> we may have skipped first two. Oh. Um, yeah. okay. um, but you know, it's live. So it's, it's live. Fun. It happens. Um, <laughs> but from somebody who suffers from bipolar disorder and, you know, lots of mental health, you know, is illnesses, that song really spoke to me. So thank you for that one. Oh, um, I really appreciate that one. Oh, so, um, Let's keep it going. <laughs> okay. okay. So, We're going to play both verses of the next song. All right. We're playing this. What was that? Uh, circus thing. Yeah, we're gonna make it. 
Yeah, keep on rolling. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, it's your time. There we go. Um, this one is called Something Plain, and the lyrics are kind of open to interpretation. Well, just let's leave it at that. Also from our first EP, um, Settle Earth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, virtual. that was awesome. Um, you said that song is open for interpretation. Yes. Is it really? Because <laughs> because I read right through it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because if it's what I'm thinking about 
five years ago, I moved to Virginia from that place, and I was about an, a mile away from where that happened. So if we're on the same page, I no, don't we are. no, I don't think we are. Seem to see again. Now you're seeing. Now you're opening it for interpretation. So again, <laughs> I, I honestly don't know, but that's kind of cool. Yeah. See, you, I was referring I, to the Trayvon Martin case. Okay, oh, I, I wrote it before that. I wish I really had about something that was that socially important. Um, yeah, I mean, because I mean, the lyrics fit a hundred percent. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You're right. They do, but yeah, no, no. I wrote it before before that terrible tragedy happened. Yeah, like I said, I was a mile away from that when that happened, because um, wow. I I lived in the Sanford Orlando area um, before I moved to Virginia, and yeah. So when I started listening to that, I'm like, I'm sitting there tweeting, you know, making sure, you know, trying to generate as much buzz, and I'm just listening. I'm like, is this what I think it is? <laughs> I'm like, and then I'm just listening harder. I'm like, it's gotta be. But if yeah. you didn't. No. More power to you because that there's some other forces at work that made you write that song to make it still relevant today. Weird. That's crazy. That's super weird. So super weird. my hat's off to you. That's that's an Thank amazing you. song. Amazing yeah. song. And that's All right. crazy that uh that you were supposed to all that. That's nuts. Yeah. Um, all right. All right. <laughs> this next song is yeah. it's a little lighter, sort of. Um, it, uh, actually we collaborated with another local Cleveland artist on this song. Um, she came and lent her beautiful vocals to a high harmony that's on the recording. Um, obviously that won't be here today. Uh, her name's Emily Keener and she's just a, an amazing artist and she just released a record. Um, but anyway, her voice is on this song. Um, it's a little bit folkier than what we normally do, but since we're independent, we can do whatever we want. <laughs> we know that. We know that feeling. Um, it, it's whatever we want. So this one is called It Goes On. Oh, I look to the west and my own 
the end of that one uh that's that is a beautiful song oh thank you oh wow thank i'm you. just beautiful thank you much appreciated hey um, we only have one left one left <laughs> i know weird um and it's our hit <laughs> liar um from the dance movie that we've got the music video and all of that stuff and had just this amazing musical journey. Um, and like I was saying earlier, you know, having written it autobiographically, you know, it was a cathartic experience to write the song, you know, basically to say, okay, this person did this to me and hurt me in the past, but now I'm in this better place. And, you know, that was a couple of years ago when I wrote it. And now it's just like total poetic justice that this is the song that ended up taking us on this really cool journey and doing all these, you know, let, giving us the opportunity to do some really cool, fun things. So anyway, the song is called Liar. It was a perfect storm. You told such lovely tales about the future. So soft and warm, you got me so insecure. If only one knew you were alive. 
Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much. I just, I can't thank you enough. That was amazing. Hey, hey John, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, are you a classically chain, trained jazz bassist or were you a guitarist first? I was a guitarist first. Okay. Can you tell? I can <laughs> tell. <laughs> it's, it's one or the other. <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. Um, I, I, was, I was guitarist first. Um, and then basically growing up in this small area to put together a full band, I pretty much had no choice but to switch the bass um, just to have a full band. Uh, and it stuck. And I kept playing bass. But he wow. has really. So I feel like your bass is the place for you. Yeah, no, I'm happy to be a bass player, but I did start as a guitar player and switched the bass literally just so we could have a a full band being in the small area we grew up in you know they, everybody played guitar yeah but nobody played yeah. bass exactly so i switched and i'm glad i switched but yeah you called that one out <laughs> that, was, that was good <laughs> well i'm a guitarist myself that's why i asked and awesome. you know i mean there's a you can always tell you know so yeah. i mean you you play that you play it like a guitar so that's you don't see that very often it's mostly just you know pluck 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 and you yeah. are everywhere on that freaking neck and my hat's off to you brother <laughs> oh thank you very much man i appreciate it that you guys i am so glad to have you on tonight and um to have you kick off this this um summer concert series that i you know um put together because of you guys so oh, wow. well here's what here's how it happened so um jimmy emailed me and gave me two weeks worth of guests and it's you guys, and then Rocky Kramer on Monday, and then Revolution, I believe, next Wednesday. And I'm like, okay, I have three bands coming on. So I emailed Jimmy, hey, make sure you know everyone's ready to play a set. And uh, got that all squared away, and I thought to myself, wait a second. And I emailed my a a PR, and I said, hey, what do you think about doing this? And she goes, go for it. So then I was like, I, so I crunched it this past weekend, and I literally, in the course of three days, booked 20 bands. And so I'm like, I'm stoked it came together so quickly. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, it's, it's only going to be, it's only going to go up from here. And I, I, I can't thank you guys enough for kicking this off for me. Oh, hey, we are for so happy us. to do it. This Super was so fun. fun and so awesome. and so nice to meet you and talk you too. to you. You're great to talk to. I feel like we're close. I never feel that way when we're doing this virtual thing, you actually, you are in the same state. Yeah. You're literally not that far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those things, you know, again, like I, I always ask the cheesy questions at the beginning, you know, just to, you know, just to fill you out. And then I start asking the, the right, you know, out of right field questions um, just because I don't like being that typical interviewer. I like to get to know you. I like the conversation type situation. No, I like so, that. Yeah, and again, you guys rocked it out tonight, and you are exactly what I needed tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you so that. much. Can't wait to listen to the re to the other bands on this on this uh, series. Yeah, I mean, I've got them. Like I said, I've about three a week every week until the end of August. Awesome. Nice. It's gonna cool. be so. Fun. I mean, the the song that you heard uh, intro me in. Um, yeah. I actually just met them last Friday when I decided to do this. They were the first ones to email me and they emailed me that song. And um, that song just fits so well. If I if you heard the whole thing, you'd be like, holy crap, because I had just literally gotten fired from my job last Friday. Oh, my God. So, yeah, it's no big deal. Because um, now I it gives me the opportunity to turn this into what I want it to be. Um, yeah which is already happening for me. So I'm not even worried about it, but just awesome. the lyrics in that song like spoke volumes to me. So yeah. I immediately emailed the guy back and I said, first off you're in second off. Can I have this song? And he goes, sure. Nice. <laughs> so I, imme I immediately redid my, uh, I spent about two hours redoing the, uh, the intro and I debuted it on Friday and 
I cannot be happier with it. And they're, they're a great band and I have so many other bands coming on. It's, I'm just stoked. Yeah. Awesome. No, we loved the intro. We were like, wow, yeah, who's that? Sweet. That's really good. Yeah. The name of their, that band is called flying Jacob. Uh, they're okay. out of uh, Maryland. Um, they've been around for a while and they're just one of those un, unsigned talents that just needs to be heard. And I'm hoping that I give them the platform that they deserve. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Really yeah. Cool. So yeah, I mean, um, I'll I'll keep you guys informed of our, every time I have a band coming on, and you guys want to watch us on Twitch, that'd be fantastic. I appreciate Absolutely. that. Cool. But um, again, I can't thank you enough. Um, beautiful music. Um, even better story about your, you know, about who you guys are as a couple and everything else like that. And I commend you guys. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. You're so very nice. welcome. All right, so uh, you know September's right around the corner, so O H, right? I O. That's right. <laughs> we need to get that damn championship back. All right, all right, <laughs> all right guys. You have a wonderful rest of your night. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. You, too, you too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye now. Woo! What a you know that as you guys know, or is not my typical music. Um, but there's just something about her. There's something about him that just speaks to me. Um, and, uh, especially that first song that they played about mental health, it that just stuck out and they're a fantastic band, um, a fantastic couple and a lot of bands and other couples could probably take a, you know, lesson or two from them. <laughs> All right. So, um, quick commercial time and we'll be right back. Guys, I'm here to tell you all about the brand new revolutionary product for manscaping today, the Lawnmower 3.0, a product that will not nick your sack and make sure that your manhood stays protected the entire time you are shaving. So do yourself a favor and go to manscaped.com and use promo code SHUTUPCAMERON for 20% off the Perfect Package 3.0, which not only includes the Lawnmower 3.0, but it also includes ball toner, which helps prevent ingrown hairs. You get ball deodorant, which helps prevent chafing and man stank. You also get this awesome, sleek, stylish leather carrying case. All for $99.99. And when you use that promo code, you get 20% off. Also just released, the Weed Whacker, the perfect nose and ear hair trimmer. So again, go to manscaped.com. Use promo code SHUTUPCAMERON for 20% off. Trust me, your balls will thank you. Guys, ever wonder how I get this manly beard looking so good? It's all because of Viking Revolution. And at Viking Revolution, not only can you get some great beard balms, but you can also get some great beard oils, as well as some awesome quick shower pads, which helps prevent you stanking up after the gym. Also, these great wet wipes, which help prevent, you know, stanky after you know, going doo-doo. And also some pomades and some other great products all at Viking Revolution. So you do yourself a favor, go to dcproductions.com forward slash sponsors, click on the banner, and get yourself some of these great products. Viking Revolution. Join the revolution. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right, so we are back. Um, I didn't really prepare a monologue tonight because um, I'm just so stoked about the music um, going on. So I will just go ahead and uh, close it out like this. So yesterday I talked about, um, that was it yesterday or the day before? I don't remember. Um, it was the day before. Talked about that new movie on uh, Hulu called um, Palm Springs with uh, Andy Samberg. Fantastic fucking movie. Again, I definitely recommend you go watch that. If you haven't seen it yet, please go do it. So um, today, yes, no, yesterday. Yesterday was the 15th. So yesterday, um, NBC, Universal, Comcast, whatever they are, I don't even remember how to call them anymore, um, and, you know, introduced their new uh, streaming platform called Peacock. Um, and if you're an Xfinity customer um, or Comcast customer, you already have it installed in your Xfinity uh, box. Um, if not, it's available $5 a month or $10 a month. Um, so if you guys have it, Great. If not, you know, it's a cool little thing. It's there's a bunch of cool stuff on there, but all the good stuff hasn't gotten there yet. So I don't recommend getting it yet. 
unless now I do recommend you getting this if, and I stress this, if you are a fan of James Roday and Dulé Hill, the team known as psych, then get this fucking channel. <laughs> so a few years, a year and a half ago, they did Psych the movie. The first one it was a Christmas special. And now Psych 2, the movie, is out. It's called Lassie Come Home. Because for those of you who saw the first one, know that he wasn't in it. Um, Carlton Lasseter was not in it um, because he, the actor who played him had a stroke prior to the movie and he couldn't be a part of the film. Um, so that's actually the center of this whole thing is now that the, the character Carlton got shot a few times and actually had a stroke while he was in a coma. And, and the whole thing is him coming out of it and the struggles and so like that. Um, however, it is classic psych in every shape and form of it all. Psych is by far my third favorite show of all time. My, my favorite shows of all time. Everyone knows that scrubs is number one. How I met your mother is number two. I don't want to get into a debate about the last season. I don't want to get into a debate about the, the series finale. It was phenomenal. If you don't think so, fuck you. <laughs> number three is psych. Um, followed by friends at number four. Um, but psych is, those guys still have it. They still bring it. You can still tell that they are just that love. They are in love with each other as a cast. They are just like the best of friends. And you watch it. It's like you. they didn't miss a step. I mean, that show has been off the air now going on five or six years. And then they brought it back a year and a half ago for a movie. And then they brought it back again for this one. But it's like they didn't miss a beat. It was just on and on and on and on. The jokes were spot on the, you know, the, there were some throwbacks, you know, just a little, you know, Easter eggs and callbacks, so many different cool things. Um, it's a phenomenal movie. Um, it's cheesy, but it's cheesy in the psych way. So if you were a psych fan or um, you used to watch it back in the day and you're curious about it, whatever the case might be, Check it out. It's available on the Peacock Network. It's fantastic. Um, also, all the seasons and episodes of Psych are available on there as well. Um, it's a cool little network. I mean, there's going to be more coming out to it later this year. There's going to be that new Save by the Bell TV show that's gotten a lot of hype uh, where Zach Morris is now the governor of California. Um, AC Slater is now a, a PE coach, I guess, at uh, Bayside and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so that's coming out. And then I guess there's a punky Brewster remake with punky Brewster now married and has kids of her own. So, I mean, there's just some really cool shows on there, you know, full seasons of ER and all the good stuff that, um, USA has NBC has MSNBC live channels as well. Give it a listen, give it a watch. They're not a sponsor. I couldn't care less, but you know, I thought the psych movie was cool. And if you are a fan of psych, definitely check it out. Um, but as far as that goes, I'm looking through my phone right now and thankfully it's a slow news day. Um, when the first story is from NPR talking about Atlanta mayor over the face mask or order is that's your first, you know, news story. And then the second one is from NPR talking about us says Russian hackers are trying to steal coronavirus that vaccine. That's that's the top two stories on my news feed. Slow news day. Thank God. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm just scrolling through here. I don't see it. Anything else? So that's a win, people. No news is good news. <laughs> thank God. Um, so I definitely think that was attributing to my uh, my uh, my relapse here over the last couple of days with my bipolar disorder. But again, what a great, outstanding show uh, we had tonight. Great way to kick off the summer concert series. Um, tomorrow, I've got Maxim Cover Model. That's right. Um, Maxim Cover Model. 
Sherry Nelson coming on the show tomorrow. So that's going to be fun. And then Monday, like I said, we're continuing on with the summer concert series with Rocky Kramer. Um, but tomorrow I'm really stoked to bring you this beautiful woman known as Sherry Nelson. So definitely, definitely, definitely come check that out. Um, I'll probably do a replay Saturday of the um, summer concert series preview show. So I'll probably do that again on Saturday, um, just again to give you guys heads up on who they are. Um, and also, it was really great today just to sit back and listen to the cool music for two hours and play the role of DJ. So we'll definitely do that again. Um, I'll probably do that again on Saturday. At, let's do it noon. Saturday at noon, um, Eastern Time, 9 p.m., 9, 9 a.m. Pacific, we'll do the uh, replay of the Summer Concert Series preview show. Two hours of just awesome fucking music. Um, lots of different bands, lots of different genres um, that really kind of speak volumes. So we'll definitely do that again on Saturday at noon, East, 9, West. But until then, guys, keep it heavy, keep it rocking, keep it fucking metal. And remember, don't let your version of Bipolar Bob or Depression Dave beat you in your boxing match. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 8 p.m. East, 5 p.m. West, with Maxim Supermodel Sherry Nelson. Until then, peace.